I didn't, if oh, I didn't, I heard you guys. right? So we gotta say hi. We've done a lot of truck mods over the years, and most of them were Mark's idea. But there are a couple mods I really like. My favorite is our 60 gallon S&B fuel tank, creating a 750 mile range while towing. A close second is our air horn, but don't tell Mark that. <laughs> Bye. Trish wants that horn to be ready Always at all it. times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell that. That's not to say that the air horn Egg isn't down. a problem from time to time. First. First, first. Oh! oh. Didn't, mean to do that. Didn't mean to do that, sorry. But the horn is kind of a perk if you have onboard air. And just went up, so I just added 20, 30, 30 pounds of air. Of course, the real reason we have it is for the airbags and being able to fill the trailer tires when we're on the road. But don't tell Mark that either. To install an air horn, there are a few things you need. The first is an onboard air compressor. And in this video, the guys will be installing the Viair Constant Duty Onboard Air System. And by guys, I really just mean Scott. You know, I was half kidding when I said Scott was gonna do all the work, but it's really turning out that way. This kit is complete with the compressor, tank, air regulator, air lines, and a quick connect coupler for the bed of the truck. So the third install <laughs> is, would be putting it right here, and that's kind of cool. This video is intended to be a step-by-step -step guide so you can do it yourself, we hope. It's step-by-step -step with a lot of extra steps. <laughs> this is real. Speaking of steps, the first one is to get the spare tire down and figure out where everything goes. Yeah, go down a little bit more. <laughs> Here's your drain valve, we can please start that, I guess. Oh, how nice, they even gave you the, the you don't need any uh, plumbers. Yeah, no, it's all ready to go. So this would go here. All right, so step one is to prep the tank for mounting it by putting in all the, you know, filling all the holes. Oh, filling all the holes. All the components go in. And so you're putting the, the drain here. Because it needs to be the lowest part of the tank. Now that's not actually the lowest part. No, but it's the lowest available part. Because, because this is gonna sit up under the truck sideways. Oh. Gotcha. And that is going to be the lowest part. Otherwise, on a normal situation, that would be the lowest part. But you can't mount it like that. Right. So it goes like that. All right, step one, we took everything out of the box. We made sure we had what we needed. Step two, we dry fit where we're going to, well, step two, we brought down the, the wheel, the spare tire. Step three, we dry fit where we thought the tank and the compressor would go, what brackets we might possibly need to make. Now what Scott's doing is just filling all the holes with the, with the drain valve and the pressure release like this. And then we'll get this all ready to, to mount the, um, what do you call these things? <laughs> this is the most difficult thing about doing a technical video is you never know what anything's called. But this, but this thing right here, um, they all come with uh, Teflon or pipe dope all pre-ready to go so you can just thread it right in, which is great. Then what we're gonna do is get under there and we're gonna mount all the stuff where it needs to go. Then we'll probably run our lines. We'll share with you exactly where we're mounting everything. Then we gotta get the electrical to go up to the upfitter switches. And then if we're really doing well, before lunch, we should be mounting the air chuck, getting all that wired up. And then by, I think, three o'clock, we'll probably be just looking for another place to eat. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, what do you got there, Scott, to mount the compressor These or are the, the tank? Two bolts that are gonna mount the comp or the air tank. What size are those? I believe. What size is this socket? Half inch. They're half inch, but they're three eighths bolts. Okay. And they're. I think they're actually five sixteenths. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so they're we got five sixteen bolts. Are they, are they three inches long? They are. Okay. And our cross member is two and a half. It's just enough to work with because if you get it too long, then you have to really work around getting your wrench in there. I'm not to rush you, but the camera's getting a little heavy. <laughs> Tight as a drum. All right, so even though you've used the lower holes, it seems like it's pretty sturdy. It is very sturdy. 
Okay. Um, with the lock nuts that we put on there, that should be really good. Okay. The only thing I see, turn the camera off. <laughs> but that was the only way to mount it, actually, to make room for everything. We so we don't really have room for that, to pull that, you're saying? Correct. But we do have the water drain is accessible easily. And then to let the air out of the tank, we would just hook some something up to it. Well, don't forget you could use your water drain to dump the air. Well, that's a lot of, pr yeah, that's true. That's Cause true. you can slowly yeah. regulate it and let it out. It's yeah, the same exactly. Thing, less. Okay, problem solved. Okay, now we have to mount the compressor and that's gonna take some thinking. Yes, that will. And, and if we're gonna use that bracket or not, and I'm not thinking that bracket's gonna work. Not the way that it's configured. Now, was that bracket made for a Ford? No, it looks like a universal bracket. Mm. There's no way to mount that really that you and I were looking at to yeah. make it fit. All right, so if you've got an F-250, or I should just say Super Duty, because it doesn't matter if it's a 250, 350, or 450, all of that under there is the same. If you have a long bed, you just have a little bit more room to work with. So, so I'll let you know what bracket we end up making, thinking? and I'll give you the dimensions. If you've got a 150 or Ram, GMC, Tundra, something else like that, then you just have to go into there, and figure out where you're gonna put it. The only thing I'll, I'll tell you is, is it would be good to mount a bracket or create a bracket in such a way that you can get the compressor off and back on should you have any issues. It would be very tempting sometimes to put the compressor in a spot where it's convenient, easy, but then you might not be able to get it off later. It's got to sit up here, right up in here. So it clears the spare. And I took the, uh, I took L channel, cut it so it's flat here and here. Mm -hmm. And then it was still angled and then flat here and here. And it just kind of sits right up in there. So you need two pieces of angle iron. Angle iron. Oh yeah, we got plenty of room up there. Yeah. So do we want the angle iron to fit inside it and weld it inside or did you put it I outside? Just, outside and that didn't affect anything with the tire? No, because I used, okay. I did um, ta self tapping screws. Okay. And then this will go up around here and we have to make sure that it's angled or move for, uh, forward enough where we can get that hose okay. into that port. 20 inches, 20, 20 and inches. go 20 and a quarter. Okay, 20 and a quarter and we'll need two of them? Yep. on this side and then the compressor will just fit right right in between mount on top and fit oh right into I this gotcha pocket. so you basically what you've done is you've made like a tray yes and then way it out of the way of the spare tire and pushes it up into this pocket and so you you're actually self tapping from the bottom correct I'm sure somebody's gonna comment and say well why didn't you do it this way because I didn't know how to do it that way. That these, if you want to crank this down on this bracket, the washers they give you are the same size as the hole, and it, what's keeping it go, from going through the hole is just a rubber grommet. Mm. If you tighten it too tight, it goes right through the rubber, rubber grommet and the hole. So you need a little bit bigger washers? Yeah, to make metal, sandwich that metal in there so it won't fall, fall out. Took me three hours. It's much quicker, we're at two hours now with you guys, but. <laughs> if Scott could do this in three, he could probably do it in four with you, and five with you. <laughs> right now, you can mount the air filter directly into the compressor if you want, but if this does need to be in a, in a dry area that's clear from like not gonna get wet and have a bunch of debris. So if your compressor, if you don't feel like your compressor is in the right spot for that, then you can kind of make a hose for it because this is just the intake air. And so I think we should probably find the place we're gonna mount it and then just cut off the excess hose and then just yeah. plug it in. And so this little adapter right here is 3 8 So if you find a spot to mount this to that's 3 8 you drill a 3 8 hole, and then what, just pop that in there, and then this will stay nice and dry, your air will go into the compressor. So now that we've got the compressor mounted and the tank mounted, would next be running the lines, or should we power it? Probably power it. I prefer mounting, getting the hardware mounted, 
then we fill in the gaps. Fill in the gaps because I like that. You okay. know, so that way you got a stationary point. That's where that's going to be. So okay. now we can do our electrical line links and stuff like that. So I wish I would have put it here. Sounds like that's where we're putting it. <laughs> <laughs> because I initially on my F two fifty, the first one, I put it down here. It got so gunked up with dirt, I couldn't hardly use it. So I thought I'm not going to do that again. So the next one, I drilled a hole here. And I put it right here thinking that this would protect it from all the junk. And I still can't use it now. I have to buy a new air truck. So the third install <laughs> is would be putting it right here. And that's kind of cool. Did you just pre-drill that hole? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I pre-drilled it to make sure that there was no wires behind it. Oh. We, we kind of confirmed that once we got that. And now you're putting a bigger one in? Put the right size hole in. Should be a half inch hole. Are you mounting in the compressor to the tank? Yeah. And uh, you know what, I'm gonna need some nylon tape. For the end of the threads on the compressor tape? Correct. Okay. I'll get it for you right now. Randy's on it. Randy's on it. Need one bigger than, I can't read what that says. Um, Randy, what's bigger than 9 16 uh, We need a 10 17 <laughs> He found the right size. That's it, it fits. <laughs> Is that metric? <laughs> I'm not sure. Let me check. <laughs> and you can see he's doing all the work here. So. Yeah, but he's doing exactly the way I'm telling you to do it. <laughs> yeah. right, keep it up. <laughs> is this the right angle? That camera job is it's hard, isn't it? It's very difficult. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, I mean, the lens is heavy. Getting the right angle. You gotta. You gotta get, make sure it's in focus. You gotta find the right lighting. It's stressful. Well, I didn't you know, do this, none of that. This is, I just, this is more therapeutic. I just pushed a button. I don't know. Oh, now you talk about focus. Now everything's out. It kind of seems like this is a city job. One guy <laughs> working, everybody else watching. So. <laughs> All right, we're starting. Yep. Very sturdy with those big fender washers on there. And the hose. Uh, had plenty of room on the back side, so we didn't need that 90? Yes, it does. Okay, that is tightened up and ready to go. Are you connecting it to the tank now? We need another one of those brass fittings. You know, not only is that a better location for that quick connect, but it's easier to install than the bumper. Well, because I had to drill through, I had to drill through a steel bumper, or Cliff's Welding steel drilled through a steel bumper. This is aluminum. It's a better location. It won't get dirty, and then all you, and you can get a wrench on the back of it. And so you just drop down uh, the back of this, and then Scott's now routing the airline into the tank. Now I'll tell you another trick, Randy. You can put in another reducer. You can connect the reducer to this okay. if you want to hook like up an air gun to it or something. Like if you have a small project at someone's house and you need some air tools, like a staple or a nail gun. You can you can put a reducer onto this, and then you could just dial it down to let's say 90, okay, and then hook up your air tools tools to it. Yeah, it's gonna come in really handy. This is a Grover horn, and it's an expensive horn. I'll have links down below for this, but I'll have links down below for alternative horns. And we're just thinking through, hey, we didn't see the solenoid. How do you turn this on? Because there's a there's a switch that goes into the compressor tank that that says hey the tank is either dropping below 110 or it's above 140 turn off the compressor that's fine has that but there's no solenoid for the horn so as expensive as this Grover horn is it doesn't come with one and probably because it's like a semi truck horn and they don't know if you're gonna need a pull what's that called like a pull valve like uh, uh, or a, an electric solenoid Whereas Scott's horn, which I'll link to. 23? It's 24 up. and a half. So Overall, where did you get your horn, Amazon? Amazon Vixen. It's very similar to this. It comes with one. So we're thinking maybe we go to an auto parts store, like an O'Reilly or something, and hopefully they're gonna have a solenoid. Because if not, that'd be kind of a buzzkill. Third stop. There it is. And there's our two fittings for our other stuff. This is gonna be one Frankenstein of a horn. <laughs> <laughs> the lesson I want you to learn 
is it doesn't matter what you look like. As long as it works, <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> but your, your horn does not have to be a Frankenstein. <laughs> Because, learn from us. Because yeah. you're gonna watch and you're gonna learn and you're gonna know, hey, I should probably order or make sure I have a, what do we call it, an air valve solenoid? 12 volt, 12 volt air, valve. air valve. Or a friend with one. Or a friend with one. That works. Did Scott that? ordered a kit that no, it came one with no. it. I ordered the Grover horn. You'd think that they would have a, a, a solenoid air valve that would come with it, but it didn't, that's fine. I just didn't know. But you know, make sure you have one. Because otherwise, no horn. Nothing to open and close the valve when you wire it up to your upfitter switch. There's no upfitter switches. Oh, good. Let's get this from. Oh, there's man. So Ted's upset. That's where I was going to put my air horn. Yeah. Dad's realizing that there's no place for his air horn, which is good for me because then we're not going to be upsetting anyone. Scott's job here. <laughs> <laughs> now that we got the tank in place and we got the compressor in place, probably the next thing we're going to do is run the wires and get everything working so that we flip the switch. We know the compressor turns on, all is good. Just in case we have to relocate something based upon powering it. And once we have everything powered, then we'll run the air lines, which is simply just pushing the air through. But we'll know we have everything in the right spot. And when I lit, when I got under Randy's hood here, this is a 23 Super Duty. I realized that his switches were not, his upfitter switches were not, I think they're called auxiliary switches now because nobody knew what upfitter was. His were not located where mine are. Mine are right on the driver's side, right forward of the, of the hood. You can't really see. So this right here, I can't really. I kinda, they're all taped up. You telling me, are you telling me that we saw 45 seconds of a YouTube video and we got it solved? And we are set. Did you find them? Let me see. They're all bundled. They're, oh, they're just hidden. They're hidden, but they're all they're rolled taped up, up and completely. taped. Oh, I can't wait to get that out of there. Is YouTube not the best or what? If I, I connect mean, this. It'll, it won't, nothing will happen because... The engine's off. The engine's the off. The key is off. Truck doesn't have to be started, but the engine's on. Run, run, it's on run. Okay. So if I do this, the compressor should go. It's his first take. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Such Sorry. a buzzkill, hey, isn't it? I'm glad you called me over here. <laughs> Randy said, why don't we try them all? Not one. Not three. <laughs> what are the options here? Not four. Not five. Maybe it's a quiet compressor. You think it's six? <laughs> nope, not six. Oh, sorry about that. That six turned off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why isn't the pressure switch working? This one took Scott a couple minutes to figure out. The kit came with its own switch and gauge. The wiring has a wire to 12 volt power and a wire to the switch, but we have our own switch. So Scott passed the switch wire by connecting it to the power wire so it's always on. We're going to wire it as if the switch was always on. Okay. And then um, the pressure switch will act as an on and off automatically once okay. it reaches its desired pressure. Huh? What is that? Huh? Well, you hear why Scott's not under there, and you hear that compressor going. You want to start the truck and see if you can listen. See the truck on. You hear it? Yeah.
Wow. It, it feels a lot faster with the truck on. Scott's tightening down the last brass coupler that goes from the horn back to the tank. He already did the tank. This way our tank is completely plugged up. Our compressor is working. Kind of figured that out. <clears throat> Once he gets that going, I'm going to go in the truck. I'm going to actually start the truck so we get maximum power. Hit upfitter number five. That's what we mounted the compressor to. And we're going to let it fill. And it should shut off at about 140 PSI because that's the regulator that's connected to the tank. Oh. My tires were really a little low. Actually, they were. <laughs> well, that filled pretty fast, didn't oh, it? Oh yeah, that's real good. I was wondering if that small line that we ran. It says upfitter auxiliary switch number one is violet green. Violet, violet green. All right. Fired up. <laughs> Well, no, Randy's gonna do it. It's his truck. Here we go. All right. Do I lean on the lean when I do it, or just? You know, just <laughs> I think just a little tap. I usually keep my hand on there, a little tap. Like that. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow, it's loud. Let me do it again. Oh, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> that's that's really loud. That's higher. That's higher psi than mine. Neighbor loved it. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Awesome. So what I usually do is you gotta practice this. Is I I usually just do a little double tap. Take some finesse. Double tap? Just a little double tap. Oh, yep. that's it. <laughs> okay. Anytime we do a technical video like this, we like to have a blog. That way there can be corrections and tips and things in writing, which is a lot easier to do. So keeperdaydream.com slash airhorn will take you to a page where there'll be links to the Vire pump kit, uh, the horn that Scott has if you're looking for like more of a complete kit, um, air chucks, suggestions, tips, stuff like that. But I hope this was helpful. <laughs> that was an accident? <laughs> oh boy. So Scott pulled his truck in because we made the bracket for the air horn. So we thought while we're here, have Scott's tr truck pull in and we'll just make sure that the, the holes that Randy drilled are in the right spot. We're just gonna go mount that horn up there. That'll make it easy for Scott considering that you did most of all the work today. All right, so this is the Bilstein? Yes. How much were they? Uh, 379. Okay, and they don't bump? They do not bump. Because you have to read the fine print that says no lift. Okay. The okay. ones I bought originally were three inch lift, which I didn't think had any bearing on what I was doing. Okay. But when you put the three inch lift dual stabilizers in, they hit that housing that's underneath. Gotcha. There. How long did it take you to put these in? Uh, 45 minutes. So it'd take Randy and I about a half a day? If I would have came up here, I would have had to take the roof off. <laughs> Step 17. <laughs> <laughs> Almost done. Almost finished. It's good. Got it now. <laughs> and then this guy says, hey, um, you guys wouldn't, after he was stopping other cars in the street, he says, you guys wouldn't by chance have an air compressor in there, would you? And I said as calmly as I could. <laughs> Okay, I like almost. You were so excited. Yeah, it's, I was almost like, I was almost like. Heart is fluttering. I was like, what? Do we have an air compressor? Oh, dude, just, just wait. wait. Just wait, right? But here's what came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure I got yeah. one. <laughs>